and welcome back to another episode of Voice of the Rings. I'm your host and guide, Zolan Iron Shield, and we're going to do our very first episode, or we're usually, we're not, we might even call these episodes, we're probably just going to title these a certain subject for every video in this playlist, uh, Lotro Loremaster. So today I will be your Loremaster, and please, let me introduce you to Grandal, our uh, expert Loremaster. Say hello to everyone, Grandal. There, yes, yes, he says hello, everyone. Hello, indeed. All right, so we're gonna go on into my house here in, in Dol Amroth, my giant house. And as you can see, it has a wonderful view of the ocean. And there's my kin house right there on that. We own that whole island. It's very fun. Anyway, today we're going to this beautiful Gondorian home to do a little bit of lore, and we're gonna talk about a little bit about dwarf names a little bit about dwarves. We'll do many videos on dwarves, but particularly we're going to talk about dwarf names real quick. We won't make... Some of these videos might be long, some of them might be very short. This one's going to be rather short. I don't think it'll be very long. So we're going to go back here to the library. Here's my libraries. In fact, some one of our videos, we might listen to these stories. That would be kind of fun, right? In fact, this is where we're going to study our lore. But, first, I think we will listen to one of these stories. I think we will. So I'm going to remove the music for a moment, and we are going to listen to the lost lore of, I want to, uh, mm, lost lore of Agar Nath. Let's listen to this one. All right. Enjoy. Sing, sisters of Lyrith the Stained, maker of pestilence and poison. Mother of our brood, loyal above all others to the Dark Lord. In the distant depths of time, before us, before Mordor, memory whispers of her first poisons, concocted in service to Sauron, laying low rivals and foes. Over centuries and ages, Lyrith served and stayed true. And in reward for this, Sauron built among the trees of the Broken Vale, Saragost, the Blood Fort. Sing praise to the Lady of Blight, O oh my sisters, and tell when the Dark Lord bade her brew up dread diseases to lay low whole kingdoms and armed hosts. Our Lady Lyrith toiled in Saragost and wandered the woods of the Broken Vale. Sowing plagues and reaping miasmas, pestilences, and deadly venoms. Slowly, wondrously, the land changed. Trees blistered and wept, streams ran dark and then red. New things limped and anguished there. Broken veil no more. It was Argar knife, the bloody gore. And then, at long last, sisters, our lady found it. The affliction the Dark Lord had asked of her. Waster of kingdoms, bane of armies. The Great Plague. To the vast vat Lyrith called her bats, sleek of pelt and dark as night. Upon their wings she cast the disease, and sent them forth beyond the mountains to the world. These are names, O oh sisters, of lands where Lyrith's great plague laid waste. Rovanian and Gondor, the remnants of Arnor, the northern kingdoms of Cardolan and Arthedain. In the northern lands, between the plague and the Witch King, toppled were kingdoms of men, their vestiges scattered and fled. In the south, the Great Plague raged across Ithelian and Anorian both, and by the time all was done, had claimed the lives of paupers, knights, bread bakers, and kings. The hateful men of Gondor were thinned and driven from their walls and towers. All that they left, Moonfort and River Palace, the Dark Lord took. Their towers taken, their watch weakened. Gondor lowered its blade from Mordor's neck and crouched cravenly behind its shield. All this from Lyrith's great plague. Sing with me, sisters of Our Lady of Blight, 
Sing of her works, her loyalty, her hunger, this and is her evil. strength. By the way. Sing of the great plague that went before that any other, and made all Sauron's conquests possible. Sing of our beloved mother, Lyrith the Stained, truest and deadliest and first of them all. All right, so let's unpackage that real quick. So that is a lore book about one of the Morel, Morevel, which are like a vampire type of female race. And there's male ones too, I believe, yeah. But... They're very scary, and basically, I think what they tied in. I don't know. I'm gonna have to study this one. We will do a maybe we'll do a video on this very lore book, and I will do the studying ahead of time. We'll do a detailed thing on this, but the lore of that particular thing. But on a glance, from my knowledge, remember that there's the Great Plague in that one part of the lore in the uh, Second Age, or no, no, it's in the th the the early Third Ages, I believe, actually. Oh, Mark, I, I gotta study that better. But on um, that plague that happened, right, and it actually killed off a bunch of it, helped the Witch King win the battles in the north and all that stuff, they're saying that this vampire was the one that created the plague. And we all know good and well how a sickness can really mess up the communities and, and countries, as we all already know. Um, we all know that all too well at this time of this video. But, um, but this was a horrible one. This is like, yeah, so just as, yeah, we all know. But, um... Again, where is that? They were talking about the fortress Sauron built for her. I'm going to just quickly go to the map here. We will do a little geography in these episodes too because I like geography helps me and I like maps and I do like the maps they use in Lotro. So I'm going to use the Lotro maps a lot for this. Occasionally I might show you a picture of one I have here, that kind of thing, but we will um, see here. Um, so uh, we go into here. It's Here we go, Saragoth. So it's a large fortress behind Baradur. Is right, it's right behind Baradur. So she's actually like a queen vampire. She's like right up there with Sauron. Like she's a big bad guy you deal with in the Lord of the Rings Online that a lot of people don't realize they have to deal with after they kill Sauron. So there's a lot of stuff, a lot of big bad guys still to deal with after the death of the destruction of the ring. So anyway, there's that lore. But now let's go to a little bit different lore. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the music back on here a little bit. So we have a little background music to enjoy all right so we're gonna go over to our lore table here we're gonna do a little bit of lore together today with our friend here Grandal all right so I want to just quickly talk about a little bit of the dwarven naming all right so I'm gonna get a lot of my info today out of a certain book I have here and um, for you guys I am going to have to just do a We'll worry about that later. But um, I'm going to be getting it out of this particular book. It's going to be backwards for you guys. But it is The Illustrated World of Tolkien by David Day. His the, his books are very good. It's kind of like, um, like an encyclopedia kind of style. But it's very nice. But anyway, we're going to talk about a little bit of the naming of the dwarves. So we're also going to... We're talking... This is going to be more like Tolkien lore. And then what he based in real life lore. Right? Real life being mythologies from norse mythologies and stuff like that right so we'll just go into it a little bit i don't want to like blow anyone's heads up like <sighs> too much info but just a little bit all right so the the durin in the long sleep so we're gonna be talking about names a little bit so the sleeper so Durin the Deathless is the first king, and I'll take a little sentence out of and then we'll talk about things. So Durin the Deathless is the first king of the Longbeards, as we all know, one of the seven kindreds of the dwarves. The Longbeards, with whom Tolkien's histories of the dwarves of Middle-earth are largely concerned, um, long be uh, are, are more commonly known as Durin's folk, as we all know, right? They're the most common ones in the Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, as Durin's folk in the Honorable of their first king. The name Durin, or Durin, D-U-R-I-N-N, -N, a little bit different, but that's a, it's a conversion Tolkien did from real life, is first recorded in the Icelandic, um, uh, uh, oh, Proso Ida, in the um, Dervigatal, this is a very weird word, D-V-E-R-G-A-T-A-L-L, -L, all right, um, or Dwarf's role is what in, in a parenthesis. The name translates as the sleeper. Now, 
here's where it gets a little bit interesting with the name. This is what I want to talk about today. The Sleeper, or Sleepy, and is the key to Tolkien's inspiration in the creation story of the Seven Fathers of the Dwarves, otherwise known as the Seven Sleepers, right? Because what happened, right? Do you guys remember the lore of the dwarves? We've got to talk about this a little bit with the, for the names, right? Um, Alu, the smith, right? I hope I'm going <laughs> to be really bad if I got the name wrong. Forgive me if I do. Um, the smith, right? He made the dwarves without telling Iluvatar and that he found out and he was going to kill his own dwarves because he realized I shouldn't have done that without, you know, God letting me do that, right? Because he's like the mini, you know, under him. And Iluvatar was like, no, don't kill him. I'm going to put him to sleep. Sleepers, right? For a couple thousand, a thousand something years. I forget the number. We can, I'll put that in more detailed lore video later. But um, put him to sleep. We're just doing basic things just for fun real quick with this video. Put him to sleep. And then they will wake up again in the future after my children, the elves, are awake, right? The elves. And, and then I think the dwarves did come before the humans, though. But I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think they did. But the elves came first then, right? So technically the dwarves were created first, but they put the, he would put them to sleep. And by the way, even though Alu the, the smith did, made them, he they would only function around him and his power because they didn't have their own souls right souls are very important to tolkien right because tolkien was a christian and he really valued that kind of background right so we're to, we're going to real world, real world stuff too here lore religion everything right but um he valued that so iluvatar also granted them basically life right they weren't just stone moving statues that the one guy that Ilu that yeah so he gave him life basically and then let them wake up later right so now that you know that we just need to talk i want to talk a little bit more of the, the name here and what i was mainly focusing on the silmarillion the first dwarves are shaped by al you the smith which i already mentioned right on the command of eru i kept sleeping eru right that's yeah that's what i was saying wrong are kept sleeping under stone and um until awakened when the dark skies were filled with the starlight by Varda, right? And we all we all know that this is all stuff, right? We're gonna we're gonna get too deep if I go too deep into this. I want to make this video more simplistic about names. The greatest dwarf kingdom, the Misty Mountains. Doo -doo 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 -doo. One thing I want to talk to. Um... So yeah, my main thing what I wanted to talk about was the um, the sleeper name. So I thought that was interesting that he got that from a Icelandic lore, the name, right? That it was and it was a it was a Icelandic thing of the dwarves of the mountains, and that's the part I wanted to tell you about. Um, not unlike the real. Uh, where was that about? I lost it. I should have mocked it. That's what I'll do in the future. There we go. The source of Tolkien's inspiration for this monster is the Norse fire. So despite the wars and conflicts over the millennia, Durin's folk prospered well into the year 1980. We're not talking about our year 1980. We're talking about 1980 of the Third Age, right? We could do a... I might do a video on timelines because that's a very tricky one. So we might do that one in the future. Of the Third Age and the Sun, when the dwarves of khazad by chance of, or fate, de uh, delved too deep, and too greedily as we know, <laughs> well... There's funny jokes with that, too. In their minds, and awoke a monstrous demon of fire. This is an ancient Maya fire spirit, which is the same type of creature as Gandalf and Saruman. Another video we could do in the future, right? Maya spirit, known as Belrog, or a Valar... Valar Arkukar, meaning demon of might. The source of Tolkien's inspiration for this monster, technically, and naming for the Belrog, right, is a Norse fire giant, um, Sirt who was the lord of Mas ooh that's I'm getting I'm getting hard words here even in Greek now in uh, Norse lore Masfelheim Masfelheim it's a it's a Norse word oh, I hope I didn't totally butcher that if you're Norse I'm sorry Masfelheim all right the evil volcanic underworld domain domain of fire all right so and then they he got the idea for the dwarves of the um Atlantic and Norse of uh, there they had like a people a legendary people that would like love to mine and work the forages and be in the mountains like smaller people and that's kind of where he got the idea for the dwarves originally right so there is basis to him also why he took viking runes which are from all a lot of those northern um nations right um in the slip area right of northern top europe denmark sweden 
uh, Finland, and uh, even probably Russia and the other ones, right? So, and they've got some pretty cool pictures in this book, as you can see. There it is. Isn't that nice? Pretty cool. What it, when Durin this Deathless was sleeping, asleep. But anyway, fantastic book. I recommend it to you guys. It's a very good book. So again, it's the Illustrated World of Tolkien by David Day. Um, and then there's one last thing I wanted to talk to you about naming, and it was here with the dwarves. However brave and fearless dwarf, um, Tolkien's dwarves are on their own guard, uh, ground, underground, they are mistrustful, uh, uh, dismissive, and fearful of all that they do not know. Unlike the Norsemen, they hate the open sea. See, that's a funny thing. So Tolkien's dwarves, he makes it clear that they don't like the sea. Now, I'm sure there are exceptions in Tolkien's lore, right? For, like, certain characters and stuff. That's another interesting thing besides naming is, like, where do they like to live? This could be another really good video. You guys, give me ideas for more lore videos, right? I'm just doing little fun top things here. I'm not going in super deep because I don't want to go crazy and I haven't done a ton of studying. I, I, certain subjects I pick later, I will study very thoroughly, right? And then we will do in depth where I'm not bouncing around and changing subjects. I want to make sure that I make these very um, precise and good and then I focus on my thoughts. I don't want to be popping around because occasionally I'm, I'm trying to do better at that in my other playlists too where I'm talking about something with you guys. I get distracted with something that we're doing or reading and I forget to finish what I said. And later I'll watch the video and I'll be like, I totally didn't finish what I was going to say. That's annoying, <laughs> right? So I'm trying to get better at doing that. So that's... Don't do the whole squirrel thing, right? Where you lose train of thought and go on a new subject too fast. Um, dwarves are general. Oh, here's the one I wanted. To Ultimately, however, we find that Tolkien remains largely consistent with ancient folk traditions. His dwarves are the um, genies of the mountains, just as hobbits are the uh, genies of tilled soil and farmland, and ants are the genies of the forest, right? So, am I saying that? Yeah, interesting word, terminology, but through his research, Tolkien felt that he was able to understand fully the true nature and character of this secretive, stunted, mountain-dwelling race, which I, I feel Tolkien brought the dwarves to all fantasy lore, right, in the last hundred, hundred years since Tolkien. Like, before that, they were in lore things, but they weren't, he fleshed them out as a race that now people have taken and, you know, adapted to other things, right? Because there are things that, in some games, that dwarves are like the sea, right? They like boats, which is doesn't really make sense, but, I mean, they're different, right? They're just more like small people, but they are a dwarf race, right? They're different than humans. So, definitely interesting with that kind of stuff that Tolkien did, right? So, anyway, I didn't want to make this video too long, so I think we will end here pretty soon. The main thing I wanted to focus on this was the name Sleepy sleepers so it's very interesting that it was a duration uh, a derivative of icelandic um things in history in our time in real in real life to what tolkien got the inspiration to to make dwarves and then the inspiration of the story that they got created and then were given a soul by god to go to sleep and then slept for a couple thousand years till the elves were created and then they got to wake up right and that's why they're sleepers right so, very interesting. We will do more lore videos in the future. I hope this was kind of fun. I know it was just kind of a little bit of talking and rattling uh, off with info and stuff. I want to try to make them more precise and more exact on certain subjects later on. I just wanted to make one video just for fun, just to talk a little bit with you guys. We could do live ones in the future. Also, please, please, please leave some comments of ideas you want me to do, guys. Because if I have an exact thing you want me to do, like, you know... Uh, maybe something a little less generic because a lot of other of our great YouTubers on YouTube have made really good playlists of things like, you know, about, you know, main characters or this or that. If you want that, leave a comment and I'll make one, right? We could even do one that's like more in Tolkien and using the maps in the Lord of the Rings here, right? Where we can um, do stuff on showing things in the world, right? Where we could talk about, you know, the Western Gondor and the Path of the Dead. And here we have a map right here. We could even go there. See, that's the cool thing. That's the really cool thing about doing this in Lotro, right? So, like, for example, like, if we want to talk about, you know, the 21st Hall that they've run through in the Mines of Moria, right? We could actually go to the Mines of Moria and actually go through Zelek and um, Zelek Melek and the 21st Hall. We could actually go and look at it, right? Like, 
it's really cool. We can find certain things. If we want to talk about the lore of the Belrog, we can go up here and actually see the Belrogs as corpse. And we could talk about Belrogs a little bit. That would be kind of a cool one. So leave comments that you guys like down there. Um, things that, um, subjects you want me to do in the future more. Uh, things you want me to do. And then I will do studying, whether it be off the cuff, kind of like this video was, or just a little bit of fun lore talking. And you're welcome to join. If you don't, if you made it at the end of the video, you're awesome. Um, but if it's, or I, if it's something really direct, I will study ahead of time, do studying, and then do a video on it. So we'll have a really nice studied video and talking and then we could do some visuals in lotro i might bring up some pictures you know or m other maps too and other lore things right maybe an actual page of something out of tolkien's work so you guys can see what i'm reading that kind of thing and maybe i'll do some voices while i do reading to you guys out of different books you know what i mean that kind of thing we could even do some straight lore out of certain books i don't I, you know i could do a reading of something out of one of the lord of the rings you know if you guys want to do voiceovers in that i've never i used to do that when i was younger read books and do voices for characters but now that I'm doing this, maybe I could do that. Anyway, leave your comments. Leave ideas you want me to do for lore. Don't forget to click that subscribe button right above me. The next episode in the playlist will be over there. And our main playlist of voice with our voiceovers in the Lord of the Rings Online MMO will be right there. And see you guys in the next one. And thank you so much for joining us. Grandel thanks you as well. And we'll see you in the next episode of Alotro Loremaster on Voice of the Rings. Have a great day in Middle Earth, guys.